Shalom to all my Israelite brethren and assalamu alaikum to my brothers that are in the truth. I want to talk about the comforter because the comforter or the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is a mystery in these churches. The Holy Ghost and the comforter is also a mystery in these Israelite schools. All right. I want to bring out the first instance of comforter. This is going to be in 2 Samuel 10, 3. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, their Lord, thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he have sent comforters unto thee. So we see comforter is used as a noun implying of a person or people. So we can continue to look at this. This is in Chronicles, First Chronicles 9, 3. Okay, it's a repeat of what was said in 2 Samuel 10, 3. Job 16, 2, it says, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are ye all. So this is further proof that comforter is speaking of a person. Okay, all right. This is in Psalms as well. Psalm 69, 20, reproach hath broken my heart and I am full of heaviness and I look for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. Now, when we look at the word comforter in the Hebrew, it is going into someone who's gonna feel sorry for you, someone who's going to come and counsel you, okay, and and someone who you can take console in, okay. So um, this word is going into one that would show some condolence, okay. So let's go to the New Testament where Jesus brings out comforter, okay. This is going to be. Found first, John 14, 16 is going to be found there. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Okay, first I want to destroy the lie that is going on in the IUIC schools. They are saying that Jesus is the comforter, okay? Jesus is a comforter. I would not disagree with you on that. But the Bible says God would send another comforter. And this comforter will abide with us forever. Okay? So I don't disagree that Jesus was not a comforter. He came and he comforted Israel. All right? In John 14, 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So we understand now that this Comforter is the Holy Ghost, and he will teach us all things, and he will bring all things to our remembrance. OK, so now we can understand that this comforter is the Holy Ghost. But my question is, who is the Holy Ghost? Let's go to the book of John, chapter 16, and let's go to verse 13. How be it when he. So we know that this person is a he, a man. The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. Notice it said he, one, two, three, four, five, six, if you if we count himself. That's six times, okay? And we're going to go to verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. So, this is so much uh, masculinity. This is so much reference 
There's not one scripture in the Bible that has more reference of a he in a single verse. So we know without a shadow of a doubt that this Holy Spirit's gender is male. Okay. And it says he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Okay, so what does it mean when it says he's going to glorify Jesus? I believe he has the true revelation of Jesus. And I believe this comforter would come and he would tell us the truth about Jesus. Because there's a lot of lies that's been pushed on Jesus. And many people have made a God out of Jesus. When we know from Matthew 19, Jesus said, why you call me good, seeing there's one good. Okay, so Jesus always separated himself from his father's glory. All right. So when we look at the word glorify, this is exactly what the comforter is coming to do. He has the true revelation of Jesus Christ that he was not God, but a man a servant and Messiah. So that's glorifying him. Okay. If we look into more evidence that the comforter is a person. Okay. Um, I want to go to first John because the word comforter actually is another word for advocate. All right. And this is in first John two, one, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So there we there we go again. I agree that Jesus was a comforter, but do I believe that Jesus is the Holy Ghost? No. I believe Jesus was speaking of another man that would come after him in the future that will glorify Jesus and will have the right revelation of Jesus. I believe this person he was speaking of is the prophet of Deuteronomy 1818, also referred to as that prophet. OK, so let's let's deal with that. Let's deal with the fact that. When the Bible says spirit, it also can mean a person. OK, so that's going to be in the book of First John. OK. First John four. Beloved. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. So when it says, believe not every spirit, he's literally saying, believe not every prophet. Believe not every prophet, but try the prophets and see if they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. And how do we try the prophets? This was in Deuteronomy 18. Let's go to verse... 20. This is Deuteronomy 18, 20. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Okay. Verse 21. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord have not spoken? Verse 22. When a prophet speak of in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord have not spoken, but the prophet have spoken it presumptuously, thou shall not be afraid of him. So God Almighty gave us a way to test these spirits or another word for spirits is prophets. In some of these scriptures, You'll have to research it and study it. But most of the scriptures, when it's bringing out spirits, it can be used as prophet as well. 
Okay, so now we got that covered. We're going to go back to what I was beginning to talk about, about the Holy Spirit, okay? So now let's go to John chapter 1, okay? Because we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, and we're going to talk about that Deuteronomy 18, 18 prophet also referred to as that prophet, okay? So now when we go to John, and let's start off at verse 19. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? All right, now you got to understand during this time, there was much expectation in the people's heart. They was expecting a prophet, okay? And I want to give you another reference to that. This is going to be in the book of Luke um, because I like to be spot on with my scriptures, all right? I want to back up what I'm saying. This is going to be in Luke 3.15, and it says, And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. So the people were in expectation. They was expecting a prophet. Not just one prophet, though. That's where Christians get confused. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 20. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him. What then? Art thou Elijah? And he said, I am not. Okay, so that's two prophets right there. They asked him if he was the Christ. He said no. Okay, so they moved on. New topic. Then they asked him if he was Elijah. Okay. Now, one way to break this down is if I ask you, are you a police officer? And you say no. I'm not going to ask you, are you a cop? I'm going to ask you for another class of whatever. I might say, are you a fireman? Okay. I might say, hey, are, are you a FBI agent? Because those are all different uh, departments. Okay. They all work for the same uh, government. Okay. But they are all different departments. So they asked him if he was the Christ. He said, no, moving on to the next department. Then they asked him, are you Elijah? Okay. And then he said, I am not. Okay. So we moving on to the next department. Bingo right here. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, no, 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 I am not he. So those were three people they were expecting. They was expecting the Christ. They was expecting Elijah. And they was expecting that prophet. Okay, that prophet, we're going to keep going. All right. We're going to keep going to that prophet because a lot of people don't even know that, that they were expecting these three. Okay. All right. So let's look at um, Deuteronomy 18, 18. Okay. This is referring to that prophet. All right. So let me get there. Deuteronomy 18, 18. And it says, and it says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Okay, that's the tricky word right there because the word brethren don't actually mean from the same tribe. It actually can mean someone of your country. It could be a neighbor, okay? Just like when the Bible uh, says Abraham called Lot his brethren. Lot was not actually his brother, okay? Just like the Bible says in Deuteronomy 23 about Edom, it says your brother Esau, okay? He said, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite because he is thy brother. Okay, so even though they wasn't 
from the same tribe, the word brother goes deep. And this is where a lot of people get confused. They actually think that this prophet was an Israelite, but that's not true. And I'm going to prove that too. He said, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, from their countrymen is what is going into, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I command, command him. Verse 19, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Okay, so this is exactly what Jesus was talking about when he talked about casting out devils with the finger of God. And they literally called him a devil. Okay, so let's go to that reference. Okay, this is going to be Matthew 12, 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto man. Verse 32, and whosoever speaketh a word against the son of man, it shall be forgiven him. That is speaking of Jesus because they was literally calling him a devil. But look what he says. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost or that prophet, that Deuteronomy 18 prophet, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So there you have it right there. That same I will require it of him in Deuteronomy 18, 18 is also seen right here in Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. All right. There is not going to be no covering for your sin. God is going to hold you accountable for this last prophet, this last messenger, this seal of the prophets, God is going to require it of you, okay? So that's going into the ministry of the Deuteronomy 1818 prophet. Now I want to keep going because a lot of people say, okay, this prophet was Jesus. But I'm going to take you and I'm going to prove it to you in Deuteronomy that Jesus was not this prophet, okay? So when we go to Deuteronomy... And we go to chapter 34, okay? And we'll start at verse 9. And Joshua, another word for Joshua is Jesus. The son of none. I like saying the son of none because most of us should believe that Jesus was born miraculously. Now, these IUIC camps, these these camps, they want to say that Joseph was his father. They have no understanding of the scriptures. OK, God literally made it so simple for a child to understand that Jesus or Joshua is the son of none. God spoke and said, be. And he was so Joshua, the son of none, was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearken unto him. And did as the Lord commanded Moses. But watch this in verse 10. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Okay, so right there that's telling you there arose no other prophet like Moses in the nation of Israel. Israel. Point blank. Point blank. So yeah, when we go to Mark chapter 12 and verse 35, and Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. David, therefore, himself call of him Lord. And whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Now, I know many of y'all don't understand that revelation. Okay, so basically what he is saying is, 
How can David call him his Lord if he's his son? So he's basically saying this man is of another nation. This man is not an Israelite, okay? Because he will not be able to call him Lord, except he be of another nation. Now think about it when Nehemiah was in captivity, okay? And he had the other nation over him, okay? They will call them Lord. Whenever Israel was in captivity, think about um, Daniel, okay? He will call the king of Babylon, Lord, okay? My king, the Lord. So this man is of another nation. Now that word Christ, okay, if you really think about it, it means his anointed one and his anointing, okay? That's what Christ literally means, okay? Christ is the Greek translation of Messiah, okay, as well. So there's many saviors, okay? Uh, the Bible says many saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. So when we get that word Christ, he wasn't necessarily talking about himself. He was talking about another Christ or another messenger, okay, that would come. Okay, so now Jesus literally disagreed with the Pharisees on practically everything. So we know he was in disagreement with them because they was trying to say that, oh, it's going to come from the nation of David. Okay, but Jesus literally confounded them. Okay, all right. In verse 37, David therefore himself called him Lord. And whence is he then his son? Okay, so that's implying that this Christ, okay, or this messenger, and remember, David said this by the Holy Ghost, okay, would be of another nation. Okay, so now we got to get back to this comforter. All right, let's 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 go to the prince of this world has been judged, okay? Um, none of this stuff is practice. I'm just really just going through the scriptures and I really wanted to get rid of this lie, all right? This is going to be in John chapter 12, okay? Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. That's not talking about Satan. Okay. As you can see, Satan is here. Okay. Doing what he's always been doing. This is talking about Israel. Israel was the prince of this world. Remember in Genesis 32, 28, it literally says Jacob's name was changed to Israel, which means a prince that prevails with God, okay? So this, this judgment was going to come on the nation of Israel. Jesus was there to announce the judgment that was going to come on Israel, all right? So now when we look at this comforter, who was going to come with consolation for Israel? Do y'all know who he is yet? Do y'all know about this comforter who would come after Jesus? Just like Elisha came after Elijah. Elijah was taken alive up into heaven. Now, I truly believe that was Jesus Christ. That represents Jesus Christ, excuse me. That was a type and shadow of Jesus Christ, Elijah. Okay, he went up to heaven alive. Okay, but Elisha... He died a natural death, okay? Elijah passed the mantle on to Elisha, okay? Remember the sons of the prophets were saying, oh, don't you know that your master is going to be taken from us? Remember Elijah said, I know it. Hold your peace. Be quiet, okay? That's why we believe that Jesus Christ was not crucified, okay? That he was taken up alive into heaven. When you look at this type and shadow of Elijah, he was taken alive up into heaven, okay? But the one who came after him died a natural death, okay? So I conclude this message. It only makes sense that this comforter, this Deuteronomy 1818 prophet, the Holy Ghost is none other 
Then the prophet Mohammed, peace be upon him. Okay. Everything about what we read fits the prophet Mohammed perfectly. Okay. All right. Now, others break down the comforter of the Holy Ghost as the angel Gabriel. Okay. But that's still the one who gave the message to Mohammed. Okay. The Holy Spirit is not some ghost. It's not some spook. It's not Jesus. Those are all lies. Okay. Even right now in the Christian church, and in these Israelite schools, all they talk about is the spirit, the spirit, the spirit. The Holy Spirit ain't moving none of them. The Holy Spirit does not operate the way it did in the early church. Okay. They're all filling themselves around in the darkness, groping to find the wall. Okay. The Holy Spirit, I would liken it today as when David was dodging King Saul who was throwing a spear at him. I, I, I would liken the Holy Spirit of today to like uh, Goliath when he came against David with the spear. Have you noticed the Christian churches and these Israelite schools is always talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and, and, and it's nothing, okay? The true Holy Spirit or the comforter is the messenger, Mohammed, Peace and blessings be upon him. He is the Gentile prophet. Okay, his ministry is seen in the Bible. I came to Islam through the Bible. He is the donkey that talked. There's only one donkey that talked and no, a sheep never talked in the Bible. But a donkey did talk. A donkey is an unclean animal. A donkey represents a Gentile. God gave us water from a rock. That represents Mohammed, peace be upon him, getting a revelation from the angel Gabriel in a cave. That was the water from the rock. That is the only water right now that the children of Israel can drink and be saved. Okay, we all have to come to Shiloh. Mohammed, peace be upon him, is the Shiloh of Genesis 49 and 10. We all have to come to him. Okay. He is the water that came out of the donkey's jawbone when Samson was dying of thirst. Okay, what does that mean? The Deuteronomy 18 prophecy. I will put my words in his mouth. That is the prophet Mohammed, peace be upon him. Now you all have an understanding of what the Holy Spirit really is. Shalom, Israelite brothers, y'all need to wake up. Those those camps are cults. Those camps are cults. They hate Arabians more than they hate white people. And, you know, we are in a peaceful nation now being in a nation of Islam. And, you know, um, but these Israelite schools, they push that the white man is the devil. And the thing about that is, is that when Jesus was here, he called the southern kingdom devils in John 8, 44. John the Baptist called them vipers in Luke 3, 7. When you read that, okay, Jesus literally never called nobody the devil but the southern kingdom. I believe Israel was a type of the devil. I believe the nation of Israel was the nation that was close to God, who was high and mighty, and God brought them down, and he brought up Someone else from another nation, okay? And in this nation, it ain't all about ethnicity no more. It's about bringing forth good works, okay? So I know a lot of y'all gonna have to swallow y'all pride and y'all waking up thinking y'all Israel, but the thing about this is that Matthew 21, 43 says, the kingdom shall be taken from you. Israel and given to a nation, a fruitful nation. That's the nation of Ishmael. All right. God blessed Ishmael in Genesis 1720. Is Ishmael has always been blessed. Okay. His nation was the replacement for Israel in the beginning. Shalom, Israel. Shalom.